HR Party of One is brought to you by Bernie Portal. Let's say you're recruiting for an open sales role at your company. You've been trying to fill the role for months and it seems like the end is finally here. The one candidate has exceeded all other interviewees with flying colors. She crushed every interview and would be a remarkable add to your company. The hiring manager shared with you today that she's going to offer her the job. During this job offer, the hiring manager says, Hi, Amy. I'm so excited to let you know that I'm offering you the role as our new sales representative. We met with a series of candidates and agreed that you're the best addition to the team should you accept this offer. So, you ready to join our team? Hmm, what's wrong with this job offer? Do you know? Well, today I'm going to go over the right ways to extend an offer, and then I'll share with you why this hiring manager made some mistakes. We'll go over the right ways to extend a job offer, such as when you should make the job offer, how to extend a job offer, why you should use this method, and the proper platform for making a job offer. Let's get started. Okay, so you've found the perfect candidate, but when exactly do you make the offer? Well, the short answer is when you know they'll say yes. So what do I mean by that? It's important to know the candidate's commitment to the role before you extend the offer. Are they all in with your company? Are they still applying for other jobs? Would they accept an offer if you were to give one? So let's focus on that last question because it's an important one. While you're interviewing candidates, you should naturally start to gain clarity on how interested a candidate is in the role. After each interview, you should always ask if they have any questions because there will likely be a number of leaders involved in the interview process for each candidate. All notes and comments about each applicant can be saved right within an applicant tracking feature like we have in Bernie Portal. That way, it's easy for every hiring manager to view these notes and have clarity around what has been discussed already and what still needs to be assessed. If the candidate has been asking questions and really investing their time in understanding the role and company and continues agreeing to additional interviews, it can appear that there is a significant level of interest in the role, and it may seem likely that they would accept a job offer if presented with one. However, you can't be positive. Therefore, I'm going to walk you through how to find out their answer before actually making the offer. So, how to extend a job offer. So how can you be 100% sure that a candidate will say yes? Well, when you've decided that a candidate would be a great add to your organization and you'd like to offer them the job, the first thing you should do is review the terms of the role. Discuss the responsibilities, compensation, benefits, PTO, all the other important factors that would affect a candidate's decision. Confirm that everything matches with the candidate's understanding of the role. If the candidate does in fact agree that it all aligns with their expectation and understanding of the role, you would then ask, if things were to move forward, what day would you be available to start? If the candidate responds saying that they'd be able to start two weeks after being offered the position, you would then include that in your next question, which goes as follows. Okay, great. Well, we discussed that your compensation for this role would be X. We went over your benefits and PTO as well as your responsibilities. If I were to offer you the job right now, would you say yes? Would you be completely ready and excited to start in two weeks? Phrasing the question this way will put the candidate in the position to either share their excitement and willingness to join the company right now, or it may stir up a few questions. Perhaps the candidate is excited for the role, but wants to touch base with their spouse first. Or perhaps they share that they're still interviewing for other positions and would like to ensure that they're making the best decision for themselves and their family, so they would need some more time to weigh their options. In either case, you know these are perfectly acceptable reasons and that the candidate will still very well choose to work at your company. Therefore, you can respond accordingly. I completely understand. Well, I'm still interviewing other candidates as well, so I just want to stay in touch. How about we plan to touch base with each other and mention a date that makes sense based on reasoning they provided. Now you're tabling the offer for a separate conversation. During that conversation, you'd simply inquire how they're feeling about this role in comparison to others, how the conversation went with their spouse, etc. Whatever they needed time to figure out, you would just bring it up during your next meeting and see where their head is at. Or perhaps the candidate is fully on board and ready to start on Monday. In that scenario, when the candidate says they are excited and say yes, you can follow up with, well, great, because that's exactly what I'm doing right now. We are so excited to have you join our team and cannot wait for you to start on X date. 
you notice how you didn't really offer the job? They said they would say yes, and you share that you're excited to have them on board. When the conversation happens this way and you get complete buy-in from the candidate, an actual offer never really needs to be made in the way most people would think about it. So now that you understand how to make a job offer, let's discuss why you should do it this way. Why use this method? You may be wondering why you should ensure a candidate is going to accept a job before you offer it. Well, there's a couple of reasons. First, leverage shifts after an offer is made. If you decide to make an offer to a candidate before knowing how they'd respond, you're putting the power in their hands. The candidate will now know that they're at the top of your list, and therefore you will be willing to make accommodations in order to have them work on your team. This is normally when the top candidate will begin to negotiate their salary, benefits, and other aspects of their contract before agreeing to work at the organization. As you saw earlier, if you phrase the question beforehand, including their salary and benefits, then they would already have agreed to those details before you welcome them to your company. Without getting full acceptance of each detail, you're putting leverage on their shoulders. Also, it avoids awkwardness due to other potential interviews lined up. Despite how interested a candidate may seem, they still can be interviewing in other companies. If you offer them the job without that awareness, it can create some awkwardness afterwards. For instance, they may respond with something like, I'm definitely interested in the role, but I do have a couple more interviews this week and next. I owe it to myself to see them through, so I'm happy to get back to you in a couple of weeks. Now you've given them leverage and you're stuck waiting for them to continue their interview process, which can last longer than a couple of weeks. You don't know what round of interviews they're on and there's a chance an interview can get postponed. You may not get an answer for another month. In that scenario, it's awkward to revoke your offer and it puts you in a difficult situation. What if a month down the line they accept a different job and now you need to start all over? it's much easier to know the answer first because then you can continue the interview process on your end while they continue theirs. That way, your options always remain open. The proper platform for making a job offer. When making a job offer to a candidate, the conversation should be had either in person, on the phone, or through a video meeting. A job offer should not be presented via email, and let's discuss why. Offering a job through email opens a platform for negotiation. If a candidate gets a job offer through email, negotiating comes easily. They can take their time, talk to some family members, and also develop a layer of confidence that can come from typing behind a screen rather than talking face-to-face -face or over the phone where a quick response is required. Rather than having the discussion in person and giving all the details of the job, salary, benefits, hours, etc., an email offer would list these details, providing a messy platform for negotiation. Offering a job in person or over the phone allows for a conversation to occur prior to the offer being officially made. Offering a job through email does not allow for that open communication to occur first. So now that you've learned all about the right way to extend a job offer, let's go back to the hiring manager at the beginning of this episode who offered Amy the job. Can you now see why that job offer is messy? Amy now has leverage. She may feel that she can negotiate her salary and or benefits since she is clearly the chosen candidate for the role. Or she still may be interviewing elsewhere and now the hiring manager will be stuck waiting without any guarantee that Amy will accept the role. You definitely don't want any of your hiring managers or yourself to be stuck in these scenarios. If you follow this method, you'll never have to be. In this episode, we've discussed the right way to extend a job offer. To recap, a job offer should be made when you know that the candidate is going to say yes. You should have a conversation in person or on the phone or video call, and the conversation will give you their answer before actually offering them the role. Additionally, we talked about why the offer should be made this way as to avoid giving the candidate leverage over you and avoiding sticky situations. Get their buy-in first and you're certain to recruit top candidates. Remember your role is as strategic as you make it. And that's it for this episode. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notifications about our newest episodes, which are released every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, thanks for watching.